Welcome aboard everyone, you are watching Kill Train Gaming for our Star Wars Battlefront 1.05 update notes. In patch 1.05, they make a number of changes to game modes, maps, weapons, and vehicles. Uh, you'll first notice the update at the main menu where you'll see a new content available label on the mission section. Underneath this, there will be a box saying February update as well, where you can read EA's blog post about the update in your console's browser. If you then pan over to the settings section, they've made two minor changes to the settings options. First is the addition of a film grain slider option that you can adjust as you see fit. This combined with the heads up display options we see later on, this can make for some pretty cool video effects. Uh, the second change is to the audio settings. If you turn the music option off, it will actually turn the in-game music off for the entire game now instead of just in-match. A main addition to the game is the survival mission in the ice caves, which can be found in the bottom left of the survival missions menu here. Another major change in this update is the addition of the Twilight on Hoth map, so we're going to go through the rest of the changes while we turn off our heads-up display and show some gameplay of the new map on Turning Point. This map is also available in the Walker Assault, Supremacy, Turning Point, Blast, Fighter Squadron, Drop Zone, and Heroes vs. Villains match types. The other map changes are the addition of the Jundlin Wastes, Forest of Endor, Outpost Beta, and the Sora Subcomplex to the Turning Point game mode. Most of the other changes are to weapons and vehicles. For weapons, changes were made to the Bowcaster, Barrage, Homing Shot, Ion Torpedo, Pulse Rifle, Cycler Rifle, and the Orbital Strike. In general, primary weapons now do more damage to air vehicles. The Bowcaster has seen changes to its explosion and its direct hits. Explosion damage has increased to 15, up from 10, but explosion radius is now smaller at 2.5 meters down from 3. The fully charged direct hit has doubled to 40 from 20, and the normal direct hit is up to 30 from 20. The Bowcaster has seen a power increase, but now requires a bit more accuracy when using splash damage. Barrage also received a buff with damage going up to 55 from 50, and getting a 5 second cooldown reduction to 35 and 30 from 40 and 35 seconds previously. They have also fixed the bug that made a first round of Barrage disappear if you used a cooldown refresh and fired another off after. Both rounds will now explode. Ion Torpedo uh, got an increase in projectile speed up to 30, 380 meters per second sorry, from 350, and the turning angle was also increased to 125 degrees up from 120. This will help them land successfully on air vehicles. Pulse Rifle, uh, they will now move 30% slower while you're aiming. Cycler Rifle users will now move 40% faster while aiming, and bullet speed was increased to 450 meters per second from 300. Orbital Strike has also been fixed to properly trigger on button press now. And for vehicle changes, the A-Wing sees a debuff in the form of a hitbox increase, so they'll no longer dodge blasters quite as easy. They'll also now properly take damage when flying into an ATST with their shields active. The Slave 1 will now properly see Rebel shield icons when they're active, and the ATST will now properly record kills with missiles while firing primary blasters. This means no more false suicides. The ATAT -AT Walker's Orbital Strike should now properly aim and not get stuck, and you will no longer receive an out of bounds message in a T 47 airspeeder on turning point. There are more changes included in the update, which are mostly minor bug fixes, but do include minor game mode alterations such as at, -AT health on certain Walker Assault maps. If you want to find the full patch notes, follow the link in the description below, and please remember to like and subscribe for all the latest news from Kiltrain Gaming.